Hi, welcome to Do This, Not That. I'm Sue Self, licensed clinical social worker and behavioral health liaison manager for BJC Healthcare. Today, we're trying to understand and feel competent and confident when providing care for patients who experience hallucinations. They say they're gonna hurt my family. Okay, the voices that you're hearing, I can't hear these voices. What I need you to do is tell me what they're saying so I can help you. It makes sense to me and it's perfectly okay to be uncomfortable when someone is behaving oddly or out of the norm. The key is to push through that discomfort to provide good care. I know the first patient I had who was hallucinating scared me to death. The truth is, it's more grandma than grad school. You don't need to be a master's level licensed professional who works on the psych unit to help a person through a difficult time. You just need to know what to do. So let's talk about hallucinations. First, hallucinations are present in many medical disorders and every patient with hallucinations does not have a psychiatric illness. They can occur in any sensory domain, most commonly auditory and visual. A patient experiencing hallucinations is reacting to sensory experiences without the presence of stimulus. The visual and auditory hallucinations can be interactive or more like a movie. You could see psychomotor agitation, like pacing or rocking, an inappropriate affect, <laughs> laughing, smiling, or crying in the absence of an appropriate cause, <laughs> the patient looking over her shoulder or somewhere else in the room, or a lot of eye movement. They may seem distracted, unfocused, unable to carry on a conversation, ask you to repeat yourself, or appear confused. Their lips could be moving or they could be speaking to someone other than you. They may be talking to you but think you're someone else or saying things that don't make sense. Potato, tornado. You could see latent speech, a delay in answering questions, as if the patient is seeking advice from someone who isn't there. And how old are you? I'm 103. Psychotic hallucinations address, accuse, seduce, humiliate, and jeer. The patient interacts with them. It's these types of hallucinations that pose the greatest risk because the voices and apparitions often instruct the patient to hurt themselves or others. And sometimes a patient will engage in risky behaviors in an effort to make the voices stop. So what's going on here? What causes this? Hallucinations can be caused by a lot of things. More common ones are a medical condition, glucose, nutritional, or electrolyte abnormalities, carbon monoxide poisoning or lead poisoning, post-anesthesia, brain masses, injuries, or disorders, adrenal and thyroid conditions, fever, infection, or serious illnesses, a sensory problem such as blindness or deafness, being drunk or high or coming down from drugs or alcohol, PTSD, a physiological brain abnormality affecting perception and thinking. So what actions should a healthcare worker take? First, begin ruling out possible medical causes, even if there's a known psychiatric disorder. Next, we need to remind ourselves that hallucinations don't necessarily mean that there's a safety risk. Not all of these patients need to be on the psych floor. If a patient appears to be hallucinating, ask directly about what you observe. For example, are you seeing things? Are you hearing voices? Are they speaking to you or about you? What are the voices telling you? Do you think that you're in danger? Has this happened to you before? Ask if the patient is considering behaviors that would result in negative outcomes. Then use their answers to assess risks like harm to themselves or others or elopement. If the risk is not manageable, follow your organization's protocol and document the specific hallucinations. Don't argue about what is real and not real. Don't challenge the patient or try to dispel the hallucination with logic. Don't touch the patient, at least not without asking permission and explaining what you're doing. Do take a respectful instead of condescending tone. 
Regulate your voice to a lower volume, tone, and slower rate. Ask permission to do things to the patient. Ground them in reality by talking about items in the room. Convey that you believe the patient is hearing or seeing things, because they are. Hi, Melissa. I'm Jennifer, your nurse. How are you doing today? What? Are you okay? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Those people are talking. You can hear someone talking? Where? I don't know. Close. They're saying I shouldn't be here. Here, Melissa, look at me. Someone's talking to you? I can't hear them talking. They're talking about you? What else are they saying? That I'm stupid. That I shouldn't have let the police bring me here. I shouldn't be here. Do you know where you are? Not exactly. I, I just, they don't want me here. I shouldn't be here. Can you see these people? Melissa, can you see people? No. Are they talking to you at all? I don't think they know I'm listening. They hate me. That's terrible. Are you seeing anything that I might not be able to see? No. Melissa, do the voices ever tell you to do things? Melissa, pay attention. Okay, let's just see if we can have you straighten up this tray table. Get ready for your breakfast while you're talking to me, okay? Do the voices ever tell you to hurt yourself or anyone? Not these people. But some do? Those people went away. I don't talk to them anymore. That must have been awful for you. Before you said you weren't sure where you are, you're in the hospital and I'm your nurse. Do you think it's safe here? No, it's not safe anywhere. It must be frightening for you. What are you most worried about? That they're gonna come and get me? I don't wanna go with them. Well, we'll do everything we can to keep you safe here. Melissa, I need to take your blood pressure. Can I do that? They say I shouldn't let you do that. It's stupid. I know those people you hear don't want me to take care of you, but I'm worried about you and I just want to help you get well. Will you let me help you? I want to go home. It's better there. Well, until you're ready to go home, are there things that we can do to make you feel safe? Maybe things that we can do to help with the voices. Maybe. What do you do at home to help with those voices? I watch TV, but my TV only works on channel 113. At night, the light has to be on. Sometimes I listen to the radio. It, it helps drown out the voices. Well, let's do that. I'll turn on the TV and you see which channels work here. I'll make a note for the night nurse to make sure you have your light on at night. Maybe she can check with you about which lights can quiet the voices. When you find the right channel, maybe then I can take your blood pressure. I'm gonna go find a radio for you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Some important points to remember are that the patient is often frightened by these experiences. They're afraid they'll be seen as crazy or insane. Often friends and family ignore the hallucinations. Not every patient who hallucinates is dangerous, nor do all of them need to be in a psychiatric unit. See him or her as a real person, not as a disorder. Patients need reassurance, compassion, and grounding. Remember what we said earlier, you don't need to be a psychiatric professional to help a person through a difficult time. You just need to know what to do. Thanks for watching.